Welcome back from Graphic Extras. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Shape Blur filter. You can find that in Photoshop, but it's CC, CS6, etc. Now, I'm just going to go over to Photoshop, and I've just set up a couple of shapes to show you the uh, the Shape Blur applied to them. And uh, obviously, just a basic square, rectangle, and a circle, and some text. Just very basic stuff. And I'm just going to go now to the filter, blur, shape blur. That's the one I'm going to use. And now, I mean, obviously, there's all these other blurs. I mean, they're really good, like lens blur, etc. But I think the shape blur actually does create some really interesting blurs. And I'm certain there's other plugins that can uh, probably uh, create even more. Some of the graphic extra ones, the Andrews plugins, can create pretty weird blur effects. But this one's a fairly controlled that even though uh, the actually the Adobe website doesn't actually give much information other than talking about uh, the obviously the larger the radius larger the etc and the kernel which doesn't really explain much about the actual blur and what it does with each of the individual shapes well I've got a selection of shapes here and I'm just going to quickly go through some of them and obviously I don't want to set it to a huge radius but you can I mean it can obviously uh, when I'm doing a video uh, tutorial, it's going to be quite slow to actually update, so uh, probably never best. So, and that's just using one of the shapes, that one there. Obviously, it's selected here. These are from a Graphic Extras, one of the uh, well, thirteen thousand or so uh, custom shapes that I created, as well as obviously other ones. So, I'm just going to reduce that down. I don't want to make it that extreme. The blur, so I'm going to reduce it down a bit. There. And the one good thing is. Which is odd for a lot of Photoshop applications and uh, Illustrated Adobe applications, and that's the preview is actually on, as this is one of the potentially slowest filters around. Um, it's quite odd that the preview is on. Normally they're always off, so the preview is on for this one. Anyway, just going to select different shapes, and it does a quick update. I'm going to reduce it down a bit more because I think it's a bit slow. 26. Just by basically selecting individual different uh, shapes, you can create different blurs. Very quick and easy. You just see how it applies to text. You actually see the up and down of the, the blur there. It's uh, And I'm, I'm just going to make it even more obvious by just going down the bottom. I've actually got some shapes here that have got multiple sort of crisscross designs. And you can actually see the crisscross there. There's actual structure that you can see. That's the one thing about the shape blur that's quite good. It does actually lend some structure to the uh, the blur. And of just apply. And again, you can obviously just increase the radius a bit. Unfortunately, the uh, I'm just going to reduce that down. Maybe that would be the quickest way of seeing it. But there's the actual option there. Yeah, takes a bit of time. Yes, like I say, you can just go through all the different blurs. They all have their effect, and so you can actually look at that one here. You can actually see a very unusual smudging just using that. And I'm just going to go now down to ones I created earlier. I'm just going to use some just basic ones here, which is just a straight line, just straight line shapes that I've just created. That's the easiest way to actually use the shape blur. You don't have to use shapes you can get to obviously on the web. Just create your own quickly, just basic shapes. That are, not that one, a line. You can see just up, down, just blur across. You can see just that effect there. And I'm just going to select multiple lines, and you can see multiple lines within the structure of the shape blur. You actually, see it clearer on here than uh, than on here. Up oh, there, it's done it. Finally, it's done it. it. Takes a bit of time, but you can see the the line structure that was actually in the shape blur. And of course, dots and diagonals. And I select the diagonal one here. And you can actually see it just basically just does it obviously across. And you can actually make that a useful and interesting, maybe like motion blur. Basically, the same sort of thing, just zooms up. And of course, virtually infinite amount of designs can be applied using this shape thing. So shapes can be used for more than just designs. Anyway, hope you found this uh, tutorial of interest and 
a way of uh, place to explore more blurring effects. Of course, once you've actually applied a blurring effect, no, just can click OK. Of course, you can now use it and you can actually reapply it afterwards. You don't have to apply it just once. You could, of course, combine it with other Photoshop effects too. And also you could, of course, apply it on a layer, which would be another way of using the design to blend with other parts of Photoshop. Anyway, I hope you found the tutorial of interest and you'll subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. There's always new uh, tutorials every couple of days. And uh, thank you much.